All right. So in preparing your PowerPoint uh, videos with the narration, uh, these are the slides that we used. So we built the slides and then in the bottom right hand corner, you see the uh, volume icon here. So that means there's a recording, but you know, let's just say I come back to this and I don't like it. So all you have to do is delete it and I'm going to record some new uh, narration. And so I would go under slideshow record the slideshow and um, choose start recording from the current slide. So if you click on this, you can now say what you'd like and right now PowerPoint is actually recording everything. My recommendation is to actually get a good set of headphones uh, that has a microphone so that the audio is nice and clear. Um, but if you don't have it, that's okay. The computer should still be able to pick up your voice. And when you're done, you just have to hit um, escape or stop, essentially it's escape. And now there's a new volume icon down here that has um, what we just recorded. Right? And so you can play it. You can now say what you'd like. And right now PowerPoint is actually recording everything. Right, so it's here. Now sometimes uh, I've noticed that there could be static on either ends of the narration. So if you'd like to clean up your narration a little bit, you have the option. So if you go up here to playback, um, right, you have these options here. And so I would go to trim audio. And with the trim audio, the only thing you can do is just cut off the ends. You can't do any editing in between. Uh, so, you know, you can, you can, trim off the beginning because there's some dead space or maybe there's a bit of static and maybe at the end I won't need that extra bit of a couple seconds there right so uh, so that's one way uh, well sorry that's so there so you do have the flexibility of um, doing minor edits to your narration um, now when you're doing the narration actually let me show you another feature so let's just say we go to the next slide um, I'm gonna re-record what I'm my narration for this slide. So if I go to the slideshow, again, record the slideshow, start recording from the current slide, not from the beginning. So current current slide. Okay. Wait a couple seconds and then you can start right um, narrating. Uh, if you have if you have animation, right, it'll record the animation. You also have some nice features uh, at the bottom left corner of your PowerPoint. So down here, you can choose to have a laser pointer, you know, so you can direct the, the, um, the eyes of the viewers. You could also, you can choose um, the pen. So what just happened there was my laser pointer was stuck. I had to press uh, escape. Uh, and then I was able to access this menu. So you can hit, um, you can choose your pen, and then also you can change the pen color if you want. Oh, I'll just use red for now, but you know, you can annotate while you uh, narrate and record what's happening on this slide. You can also pause your recordings if you want, if you want to take a break, gather yourself, and then continue on with the recording. And then when you're done, you just hit escape and then all of that will be captured here um, and then to see the animation the laser pointers the annotations being uh, drawn out if you hit on um, presentation mode right that's when you'll wait a couple seconds and yeah. then you can start right, um, narrating uh, if you have na if so just to say that when you watch it in presentation mode all of that what we just did on that one slide will show up so once you're done and you're happy with the uh, narrations and uh, you've done all the trimming that you want, um, to create the video file, you would go to File and then Export and then Create a Video. And then if you click on this, then the, the PowerPoint will then create the video. It could take some time depending on how many slides you have um, and the narrations. Uh, so it may take um, a few minutes, uh, but that would be how you would get to your video file and then from there you can use the video file directly it's an mp4 so you can use it directly in h5p or you could then um, 
compress it in YouTube and then load it onto YouTube. So at this point, I'm gonna hand it off to Yan. So since we're working together, what we did is uh, once the video was done, Carmen would share it with me either uh, using uh, uh, Google Drive or, or email or anything like that. And uh, after that, I would go to YouTube. So in YouTube, uh, whenever you go for, for searching for anything, you get that, that same view. But if you have a YouTube account, which is free, which takes only a few minutes to create, you'll have this icon here, which is create a video and more. So when you click on it, it says you could go live, do whatever we're doing or upload something. So you just upload a video. Whenever you go and upload a video, it's going to ask you to drag and drop or select file. So you just go on your, on your computer and uh, um, you select the file that you want. For example, here, um, we have uh, these videos. So I'm just going to take a one that's not too big in size um, here and you upload it. And while it's uploading, it's asking you to fill out all these other boxes. So what's the title that you want to, uh, to enter? So the title by default is the title of your file, but you don't need to keep it. You just change it um, as usual. Uh, after that, you have a description. It's important to add a description because that's the way that people will be able to access your video by uh, searching for it. So all the keywords that you want, stuff like that, uh, the description is important. And then you have that thumbnail. Right now it's loading the video, so it's not offering many thumbnails, but it will always offer you three thumbnails for each video, but you could also add your own. And I recommend that you add your own because sometimes they, they look a bit weird, whatever they're, they're giving you. So to upload your own, you only need to have a, a JPEG, an image, how to create a Image, of course, if you use Photoshop, you can do all sorts of things, but in um, PowerPoint, you could just do your one slide and save that one slide as a JPEG. It'll be, be an image, and therefore you'll have a very nice thumbnail for your video. Uh, after that, you could add it to a playlist. So this is what I recommend that you always create a playlist. So I have a bunch of playlists here, but you could create a new playlist here. And uh, therefore you could regroup all the videos that you're using for a certain course or for a certain module or a certain activity. After that, you have to answer the YouTube questions. Is it made for kids or not? And stuff like that. And in the more options, there's plenty of options, but the only one that's, that's very important is the tags. So whenever you're searching for a video on YouTube, it will search for words in your title or words in your description, but it'll also search for words in your tag. So this is where you should definitely add at least uh, your name. If ever you want to look for it, or if you want your students to look for your name, um, the, the content of the video and maybe your institution. And after that, you just, scroll down and, and say next. So here it's done loading. So that's why you're starting to see something. And that's why YouTube provided you with three um, different images for the thumbnails. So I think just for the purpose of this uh, little uh, demo, I don't need to go any further, but you just click next three times and it will give you the uh, web address. You actually have already the video link here. So as soon as this would be done, I would copy the video link and send it back to Carmen. So once your video is uh, in YouTube, or once you have your video file ready, it could come directly from the PowerPoint. Uh, we go back to our Moodle page, and um, what we do then is we, we can add an activity, uh, and then we add H5P. So this might look different if you're using Moodle in another institution because each institution has their own uh, formatting for Moodle. But uh, bottom line, you'll get the similar options. Yep. It will not be displayed the same way, but the same options will be available. Mm -hmm. So we had the H5P interactive content. And then you have um, lots of options under H5P. Um, there's many different types of uh, interactions that you can provide for your students, uh, but what we've used is the interactive video. So once it's loaded, then we can write our video. And so there are three steps. Really, you just need the first two steps. Uh, so you have to add your video. So you can add your MP4 file directly or you can enter the YouTube video link. So we go to the YouTube video and I will retrieve the link. So copy. Then I go back to my uh, Moodle page, to insert it. So the video is here. Then I can move on to step two by clicking up here or clicking down here to add interactions. So now I have my video. It does a little tour for you. 
Um, but essentially everything that you can uh, do in, in terms of uh, incorporating the H5P interactions there, all your options are presented here at the top. Uh, so I'll just give you, you know, you know, a typical interaction would be a multiple choice question. So let's just say I go to the first slide here. So we get to this exercise. It was built into my PowerPoint. Now I want the students to actually answer it using H5P. So here I would add a multiple choice question. So you just click here. Just so for, so for people to know, you didn't need to include it into your PowerPoint presentation, but we highly recommend that you do include it. So there's a space already there whenever you're looking at the video. Mm -hmm. um, so we, at this point, I would want to pause the video to give the students an opportunity to answer the question. And it's just at that one uh, time mark. And uh, I choose to present the students with that button that they click on in order to access the question. There's the option of just actually when it gets to four minutes and 18 seconds, you can see an entire uh, poster. They call it a poster. So you just see the question pop up in front of you. But uh, I, I like to use the, uh, or we like to use the, the button option because it, it presents the whole question. Because sometimes the poster only shows part and then you have to scroll to see the rest of the question. Uh, so then you give the title to the question, you know, and then so what Sir. Right. And then you, the options, the multiple choice options are presented down below. So I, you know, I think it could be potassium. Is this the correct answer? No, I'll say no. It's not oh, the no. correct answer. <laughs> and then if you'd like, you can provide um, feedback so you can give them a hint if they're asking for hints. Or if they choose this answer, you can explain that this is incorrect. question, whatever the answer is. Uh, and then option B was calcium. And you say, oh, this was correct, right? And then you can say that this is correct, right? And it has the correct number of protons, right? So you can continue adding more options to your multiple choice question, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then moving on, I, you know, there, there's other features that you can um, also access, such as um, allowing students to retry the question, right? Um, you can also show them the answer. I choose not to show the answer until they, until they select it. Um, you can give them uh, points. You can randomize the answers here. So there are some nice uh, options in terms of, you know, the, the student behavior. Uh, and that's about it. Everything else I just kind of uh, leave. Um, hit done. And so now here's the, that, that button with the students will click on, right? So when it gets to this time point, this button will appear because the video pauses and then the students have to click on the button to provide their answers, right? And this button, you can put it anywhere you want. Uh, so that's, you know, that's, that would be how you would, um, uh, insert a multiple choice question. If you've made a mistake, you can always go back and edit it. The other types of questions or other functions that you can do, you can add a text box. Uh, the text box was how I was able to have the students advance forward. Um, and so if they click on here, then that means that then the students will be directed to a different part of the video. Uh, you can insert links. You can insert um, uh, true and false questions. There are fill in the blank questions, drag and drop questions, um, even something like a crossroads. If you choose this answer, you will be directed to this part of the video. And if you choose this answer, you'll be directed to this part of the video. Uh, so these are all really nice features of H5P. Uh, you can also insert um, bookmarks to help students know, you know, if to go back to certain questions. Uh, and then that's about it. And so when you're all done here, you just have to hit save and return to the course and uh, the video should be there. So it was here. That was our tutorial video we just put together.